would like to begin by acknowledging the Dharuk Nation, which is the um, peoples and the country that I'm coming to you from in southwestern Sydney this morning. It is a lovely, warm, winter warm um, day here. We've got bright blue sky, lots of sunshine and crisp cold air. And I do hope that wherever you are, that you're able to take some time today to get out on country and enjoy the beautiful land that we all live, work and play on. I'd like to acknowledge the incredible sustainable cultures that have existed with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for tens of and hundreds of thousands of years on these lands and the innate wisdom that they have for how to live sustainably and to create innovation for the environment, society, culture and people so uh, today's meeting, we are here to share with you information about the latest call in the AGO labs, um, AGO analytics labs. Um, and so what we're going to work through today is a brief introduction to Frontier SI and AGO, and then we'll walk through the vision of the program that we're in before launching into the two challenge topics that we have on offer at the moment, and then running through a live Q&A. So uh, along the way today, if you have any questions, we would absolutely love for you to share them. Feel free to pop them into the chat uh, at any point or hold on to them until we reach um, the end of the presentation and open up for questions. So either way is absolutely possible for you. So I'd like to begin by uh, just introducing Frontier SI. Um, Frontier SI are the organization doing the program management for the AGO Analytics Labs program. So we are a social enterprise focused on anticipating and solving big problems using our space and spatial expertise. This involves many different ways of working. And we're really proud to have some incredible people who are able to uh, channel their passion to be able to make a difference on the world's big problems, such as some of the ones that we're about to launch into in the two challenge questions today. Our values are communication, agility, integrity, future focused and collaboration. And our core expertise is positioning in geodesy, data analytics and spatial data management. So I will now hand over to David, who will be able to um, speak to us on AGO. Welcome, David. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Rowe. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to provide a brief introduction to AGO. So the Australian Geospatial Intelligence Organisation is part of the broader defence intelligence group. So AGO provides uh, strategic geoint, which is geospatial intelligence support to defence, the national intelligence community and the broader Australian community. AGO also leads the defence Jewent community and as part of that um, it represents defence in national and international forums and programs to advance geospatial capability in our near region and among key players. Uh, so yeah, AGO is also a member of the national intelligence community. The geospatial intelligence AGO provides enables decision making at all levels of government and in our relatively short history we have evolved from a niche provider of intelligence products to a critical partner in a range of operations and crises. Within AGO the Australian Hydrographic Office AHO is responsible for uh, providing official and authorised navigation charts, publications and maritime data and services supporting Australia's responsibilities. Uh, next slide. Question. So what, what is geospatial intelligence or geoint? Um, often when you think of that, uh, you think of maps and charts, but geoint is actually a lot more of this. Geoint covers a spectrum of geospatial data, information and intelligence. It can be anything from a topographic map um, or hydrographic aeronautical chart to intelligence mission data or web services. Um, or to a single observation in relation to time and space, or strategic pattern of life analysis of an adversarial, adversarial force from hundreds of thousands of observations from multiple sources. Just a couple of examples of geo on the screen there. Uh, next slide. 
So to meet the challenges posed by the Defence Duant community, um, the community re released the Defence Duant 2030 strategy in, in mid-2020. Uh, this sets out a plan for delivering an enhanced geospatial capability for defence by taking a more integrated and coordinated approach. The defence duant community must transform into an integrated and future focused capability to meet the challenges of 2030 and beyond. So demand for duant already exceeds defence's cap capacity to deliver and it continues to grow. In defence, duant is delivered uh, to meet a broad range of military and national functions the range of complex national and global challenges that will require you in support and the demand for more rapid dissemination of high fidelity data will continue to challenge defence's ability to provide you in, in the timeframes and volumes necessary. AGO subsequently released the AGO Strategy 2025, which outlines AGO strategic direction to transform the way we collect, analyse and disseminate uh, data over the next five years. Um, so, the uh, the company strategy and the um, and the 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 uh, and sorry the the the, the, the AGO strategy and the AGO data strategy um, will ensure that we have data capability to support and transform uh, transformations driven by AGO strategy by transforming the way we govern. Apologies for that last little bit there, but I think you get the the the, the idea. So basically, AGO Labs is an integral part of that to try and um, increase the way that we can automate and deliver more data across our missions. Thank you, Roshni. Thank you very much, David. So I'd now, now like to speak a little bit around what AGO Analytics Labs is. The program began in 2019 when it was first tested as a concept and then it was extended 2021 to 2024. It focuses on short-term capability demonstrators, and these are small challenge-based approaches to really showcase uh, industry innovation and capability for defense. Frontier SI are the engagement and project, project management mechanism, and the focus of these projects tends to focus around machine learning, deep learning, analytics, AI, Essentially, AGO Analytics Labs exists to be able to showcase what is possible. We focus on that mid-range of TRLs and it's a really exciting space to be able to facilitate connections between industry and defence. So what happens is we come up with collaboratively, Frontier Sci and, and um, AGO, come up with one or more challenge questions. We then go out to industry like we are now to seek proposals for these challenge questions. When we're doing that, what we're looking for from you, if you're interested, and we really hope you are, is a clear statement of proposal objectives, real clarity around how you're going to make this come to life. So what, what are your timeframes? What are the key milestones and activities? How will you ensure that your deliverables occur on time? We are really hoping to really understand why you're passionate about the innovation that you're proposing. How can you meet the goals of the challenge topic? And why are you interested? What, what is it about it that really gets you going? We're also interested to understand your methodologies. So what will you do with the technology and tools that you have and potentially what will happen next so after the completion of the challenge what would you like to see happen what do you think is possible now we should note that um, additional funding is provided to some of the successful applicants for capability demonstrators for follow-on uh, pro uh, yeah, follow projects to undertake limited operational testing to increase the TRL levels even further. That should be considered as a stage gate at the end of the proof of concept. Um, and we are looking for proposals at the proof of concept stage in AGO Labs here. So what will you get from us as a participant? 
Firstly, it's an opportunity to demonstrate your capability to AGO, as well as funding to demonstrate your technology. You'll also re receive access to subject matter ex experts from AGO and advice and program management from Frontier SI with extremely quick turnaround times dealing directly with us. As a successful applicant to the AGO Labs program, there's also access to marketing opportunities for your business and we have and we've really had excellent interest this year in the program. So there's opportunity for exposure to a wide group working within earth observation, analytics, data science. It's that there's a lot of potential there. I'm now going to open up and talk about the two capability challenges that we're doing this current call out for in June 2024. So Matt Bell is on the line with us today. Matt, I will hand over to you to quickly introduce yourself before we launch into the first one, Hidden Waves. Thanks for watching. Just confirming everyone can hear me? Yes. Cool. Um, I don't have my normal headset today. Um, so thank you all for attending the information webinar today. Um, my name is uh, Lieutenant Commander Matthew Bell. My job title is Staff Officer 2 Medoc Systems. Um, what does that mean? I look at meteorological and oceanographic data um, and the associated systems that support that for defence. Um, and as David outlined, that fits within the large AGO remit. Um, we sit down here in sunny Wollongong um, as part of the branch, uh, Maritime Geospatial Branch, where the AHO sits alongside us. So that's where we, we I'm from. Um, I'm a qualified meteorologist and oceanographer. Um, and I've, some of these two challenges are, are mine. Um, and I'm the lead point of contact from um, AGO on the challenges that we're going to talk through now. So I'll just introduce the first one. So Hidden Waves. Roshni, slide please. So this challenge is aiming at looking at internal waves, where they occur over time and in near real time, and looking at some mechanisms to identify them. So internal waves occur deeply in the water column and propose hazards to subsurface navigation. Um, so think submarines, AUVs. You can read publicly what capabilities defence is requiring for that. Um, so what we're looking at is innovative solutions to identify uh, internal waves um, using from Earth observation data, um, both in a, hey, what can we look at in the databases versus something that's more near real time. Uh, next slide, please. So for everyone that hasn't seen a very pretty image, on the left here is the true color modus image from the band of sea. Um, and you can see the different groups of internal waves propagating um, northward from the Umbai Strait. So that's what we're looking for. The focus of this challenge though is on identification from imagery, not numerical modeling. We, we have other programs that are looking at that particular problem. This is about visually what you can see, um, whether that is from visible or other types of satellites. Um, and I've put a whole bunch of references, public source um, up there to assist people if, um, if they've never touched this before as well. Uh, next slide, please. So for data sets, we've left it open. Um, one data source is the Sentinel Satellite Constellation. And again, we've put a bunch of public links in what's publicly available. Um, we're really interested in seeing what we're missing um, against what's available in open source, which means there's... Attention staff. Apologies for the internal booting um, notifications. Um, so it's really open source. Get on. We're, we're not limiting data on here, um, and Defence will not be supplying any satellite data for this challenge either. So you've got just got open source to play with. So next one um, I'll talk about is depths of the deep blue sea. Um, so this challenge is around the modernisation of the data looking at depths. So we're particularly uh, interested in to automate some of our manual processes that we have and use new methods of uh, understanding those risks. So, oh, this one's a little old, um, 
But this challenge is focusing on that top um, data point there. So looking at the XPT quality of life um, pieces. So looking at ocean profiles, whether they're from XPT, so expendable bathy thermographs, um, or Argo profiles and automating manual processes or improving upon the QC. The final two dot points are not for this challenge. Next slide. So as I said, I've again provided some open source um, links and I will need to update those, but they are also in the reference material. Um, and there's some common XPT faults for everyone for awareness and looking at a profile imagery. So if anyone's looked at ocean uh, profiles in the past, you've got real time, which is normally at 70% and delayed mode, which gets a 95% um, piece. Uh, that is traditionally what's done. We're looking at what tools we can use to modernize that, do one QC system um, to really get that real time piece out. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and again, um, we've provided this in the material. Here's a bunch of data. Again, it's all open source, so you can keep going. Um, the data formats are in NetCDF, delayed in real time, as well as buffer. And there's a link to what buffer is, um, as well as the current QC methodology um, pieces. For this challenge, we've got a held selection of non-QC um, that we've been able to, to obtain that we'll look to use towards the end of the challenge to, to showcase the utility of the solution. Um, that is some public data that is non-QC that we've been able to obtain. Um, and there's the two challenges. Um, so just in response to Alex, I've emphasized XPTs. Um, we've got both. The XPTs are a lot more manual, um, but I'm interested in both um, for both solutions, Alex. That helps and I will respond more in the chat. Otherwise, Roshni, back to you. No worries, thank you. And uh, please, everyone, feel free to pop your questions into the chat or be, um, we, in a couple of minutes, we'll uh, open up for the Q&A as well. So we'll definitely come to all of the questions that you're putting forward into the chat. So now that we've gone over the challenges, I just wanted to quickly re-emphasize what we're seeking. So in this call for proposals, we are looking for demonstrations of potential when it comes to capabilities, techniques, and proposals. Um, we're looking for capability that AGO doesn't currently access. That doesn't mean it has to be completely new, but it can just be new to AGO. We will also ask for your insights into the challenges and opportunities of working with AGO. Whether that be technology, project or relationship related, we'll ask this from you throughout the project and as part of the final report. So we're keen to really have an emphasis on capturing lessons learned in the final report as we um, document that so that we can continually improve the program into the future. We're also seeking flexibility and openness to help AGO try new ways of approaching these challenges, as well as technology that has a potential path to operational use. I also wanna add in a note around IP here. So project intellectual property produced during the project will be owned by the participating partner in agreement with the lead partner. AGO will be granted a perpetual license to use any project IP created for defence purposes generally, other than commercialisation, including internal research, development, education um, and training in relation to the use of software, source code and project code provided by a project partner, the license will end at the conclusion of the relevant project and the AGO will be required to uninstall and decommission the relevant material promptly following the end of the license term. Background IP of the participating partners will be retained by the participating partners and AGO will, will own the project IP in the report required to be produced by participating partners in each demonstrator project. So if you want to go into detail for anything related to IP that is available in the project information brief, which is available on the Frontier SA website at the link that I've just posted into the chat. 
So just before we launch into Q&A, uh, I wanted to give a brief overview of the timelines here. So Monday, the call for proposals opened. Um, today we have the information webinar and Monday the 8th of July at 10 a.m. is the closing date for all applications. No extensions will be granted. With regards to assessment of pr proposals, Friday or by Friday the 26th of July successful projects will be notified and then we'll move into contracting and project kickoffs by Friday the 9th of August. Final presentations and reports will be submitted and project closure will occur by Friday 29th of November this year and that's when hey guys, projects will be delivered so they'll be running for four months. Um, and so now we launch into Q&A, please um, raise your questions not in the Zoom Q&A window because we don't have that but directly into the Zoom chat or feel free to raise your hand um, and we will be able to uh, unmute and uh, allow you on screen to ask your questions. So I might ask um, Matt if you're able to come back on screen. Um, yeah, anyone with questions? Don't all jump at once. I have a question, Roshni. Absolutely, Alex. Um, the timeline uh, seems fairly fixed. Do you anticipate any flexibility or uh, perhaps extending of the the end of the project program? It is quite a tight timeline. Um, if there is a really good reason, there may be consideration for maybe a fortnight or so, um, but it. Uh, it does need to all be wrapped up by the end of the calendar year, which is why it is quite tight with the timelines. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. And now, even if there's questions that you have around the actual challenges themselves, um, if there's something to do with the technology, um, thank you, David. That's a great question. Yes, the funding is a hundred K per project. Or if anyone would like any insights on any of the past um, challenges that we've run, anything about how they occur, all questions welcome. I might also share on my screen here if you're able to see. So this is the web page that um, <clears throat> I placed into the chat just before we get to Sun Lam's question here. Um, it gives you a full overview of the challenge. Uh, what is AGI Analytics Labs? And then if you scroll down here, we've got the supporting documents. So there's a media release. This challenge called briefing document is probably one of the ones that you really want to have a look at. So this will give you the full um, overview of all of the information for the challenge, um, including each challenge question, it gives a, a complete one pager that goes into the full level of detail to help you understand it better. And importantly, you've also got here the challenge response template, which allows you to, I'll just bring that on screen as well. So this challenge response template is basically a word document that you you can then fill in with all of the details of your proposal so it gives you a guideline of all of the sorts of details that we're after 
so hopefully that helps as well. Um, so uh, Son Lam, your question was, for the internal wave detection, in what format do we need to produce the output? I might pass that across to Matt. Yep. Um, so for the historical piece, I think we've said net CDF. So a net CDF is historical. Um, for near real time, I'm interested in what formats are available um, or how that Thank you. Um, we've got a question as well from Pablo. Uh, could you talk about the level of detail in the project proposal, knowing um, could be research projects with open-ended outcomes? So um, I will just bring up that. <clears throat> Here we go. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you're able to read it a little more clearly. So just to run through what we are seeking in this so we start off with the project title. Um, obviously, if you could also fill in which of the two challenge projects you're seeking to submit your proposal around. And then a really brief 200 word plain language summary of what your project is about, the start and the finish dates that you're um, hoping to work to. A little bit of information on who the project team is going to be, who the lead organisation is going to be, and an optional section here on any project partners. So some um, proposals may not have any other project partners, some of them may. Uh, and then we've got here 200 words on how is the project addressing the challenge topic. So working uh, into this would be things around, uh, you know, the justification for the project, what your objectives are and what you hope the outputs of your project will be. Uh, and then we ask for about 400 words or less on your approach. So what sort of technical details uh, do you, can you provide with regards to the methods and the data sets that you intend to use? A little bit about your project management approach. So what sort of um, ways will you ensure that your project is, is delivered on time um, and within budget to a high quality uh, and then we ask you to talk a little bit about how you measure success as well briefly we also ask about your why so you know why are you interested in ag analytics labs why does this particular challenge um, align with your values mission vision purpose, purpose passions um, after that is a, is a short section on technology. So in terms of technology, what do you plan to do and how do you plan to do it? Uh, what te uh, technology readiness level or TRL uh, will you be working in here? Again, keeping in mind that for AGO Analytics Labs, we are not generally seeking a higher TRL or too low of a TRL. We, we're hoping to be in that sort of middle range um, of the TRL scale. And if you would like more information on TRLs, there's a, a website there that you can go to as well. Um, we ask for a little bit of information about the outputs here as well, alongside the final presentation and report, what are going to be the things that you are hoping to deliver? So software, data sets, um, services, etc. Do you need any support as well? So here we'd love to hear, you know, uh, would you like to meet with AGO and Frontier on a fortnight fortnightly basis? Um, we'd be happy to support that kind of thing. Um, you know, what sort of subject matter expertise would you be hoping to get from AGO personnel? Is there any particular program management support that you'd like extra support with from Frontier aside? That kind of thing. Um, we also have a section here around potential delays in start or end dates. So, uh, you know, that's, that is optional, but just in case there is anything that you think may be relevant, um, that we won't penalize your application for including these details. It's useful for us to know. Um, and then an openness to interview upon shortlisting. And then we ask for a bit of a budget breakdown here and justification. And then finally, uh, we ask for a bit of a, a project plan. So um, being able to document your milestones and deliverables uh, across the four month period um, and a brief risk assessment here as well. So that is, I guess, an overview of the, 
the response template. Um, we've got some great questions that have been coming in here around the challenge questions. So we've got a question here from Andrew around the Deep Blue Sea Challenge. Are you looking for ways to enrich or add to the XBT data sets or only looking to QC existing data sets? Matt, across to you. Yeah, thanks, Roshni. Um, so Andrew, I've put some comments in the chat already. Um, the QC is the focus. Um, so currently we get raw data, non-QC, straight from the equipment that we need a QC prior to using within our ocean modeling. Um, and I'll put a link there to the devil data format from Turo. It may or may not look like that. Um, noting that's one particular type. There is others um, that can't be publicly um, discussed. Um, so that there, we might want to add enriching metadata as well um, or recheck other people's QC because um, we may not trust it. Um, so there's a variety of ways where we might be enriching the existing data, um, not just it meets a public QC. We might want to go, this meets our QC methods. Um, enhancing from the publicly available QC data sets. Does that answer your question, Andrew? Cool, thanks. Any other questions? All right, final chance, going once, going twice. Okay, so um, we might wind up this webinar. Thank you everyone for coming. If you do have any other questions, please do jump onto the um, the page that we are launching this challenge from, which I've just pot popped into the chat there. Um, there is an email address as well, agolabs at frontierasci.com.au. If you've got any questions at all as you are contemplating and exploring the open data um, in regards to these challenges, any questions for Matt as well, pop them through to the agolabs at frontierasci.com.au email address and we'll liaise with Matt and get back to you. Um, as well as if when you're um, looking at completing that challenge response template word document, if there's anything that comes up that you're not sure about, feel free to reach out to us at any point in time. We will get back to you definitely within one business day um, or quicker. Um, and we really do hope that we get the chance to work with you here. Uh, these AGO Labs programs are just so Have a good think about this and we look forward to hopefully receiving your proposal before Monday the 8th of July. Thank you for your time this morning everybody and um, have a great day. Bye.